Hey there, Luma. This is the Diagonal Moss Stripe Stitch Pattern, and I'm Denise from LumaHat.com. Super happy to bring you this nicely textured, beautiful stitch that is not 100% reversible because you can still see the stitch pattern on the backside, just looks a little bit different. Still, it's a beautiful pattern, and it'll work perfect for things like blankets, scarves, or washcloths. Now, I do want to give you a heads up that this video is for the stitch pattern only, not a full project. And so there's no cast on or cast off. Okay. All right. Without further ado, let's get started on row one. And for this row, we're going to do a purl one, knit five, purl one, knit two, purl one, knit one, and purl one. And for that purl stitch, you're gonna take your working yarn and put it under the existing loop from the top. You're gonna scoop up and create a new loop. Take the old loop off the peg right here, put the new loop on that peg and pull the working yarn to tighten your loop. You're gonna follow that one purl with five knit stitches. And I'm gonna be using the U-wrap version of the knit stitch. And for that, I'm gonna half wrap and knit off. Now you can use the flat version or the true version, but if you're using a large gauge loom with a single strand of worsted weight yarn like I did, the E-wrap is not going to work for you. It would make the fabric look totally different. All right, once you're done with those five knit stitches, then you're gonna do a purl. And so you put the working yarn under the existing loop, scoop up, take the old loop off the peg, the new one on and pull. That's gonna be followed by two knit stitches. Again, I'm using the U-wrap version and so I half wrap and knit off. And I'm gonna follow those two knit stitches with another purl. So I put my working yarn under the existing loop. From the top, I scoop up to create that new loop, take the old one off, put the new one on and pull. And then you're gonna follow that with one single knit stitch, so half wrapping it off, and then follow that with a purl. Now I like to mark off my stitch patterns with stitch markers. And so you see that um, right after this, there's a little marker right here. That's because I repeated these stitches, these same stitches three times in total. So you see where I marked marked off two more times in order to create my swatch. You're gonna repeat these stitches as many times as is necessary for your project. All right, let's get to row two. For this row, you're going to start with one knit stitch, one purl stitch, three knit stitches, two purl stitches, four knit stitch, and end the row with one Pearl. That's your 12 stitches. All right, so here we are at the other end of the project. We do that one knit stitch, take my working yarn, put it under the existing for that one purl stitch, which is then going to be followed by three knit stitches. So here's one, two, and three and then we're gonna do two purl stitches. And if you notice, I'm pushing my loops down as I go through the um, stitches. I don't do it ahead of time and you really don't need to do that, okay? Two purl stitches and then four knit stitches. I see a lot of people do that and you know, if that works for you, great, but you really don't have to push your uh, loops down. You could do that later on. All right, after you finish those four knit stitches, you're gonna end your row with one purl. All right, now repeat those 12 stitches as many times as is necessary for your project. You're then ready for row three. And for this row, you're gonna start with one purl stitch followed by three knit stitches, one purl, one knit, one purl, four knit stitches, and end the row with one purl. So let's begin row three. Here's my first purl. 
So from the top, I'm going to scoop up and create a new loop, take the old one off, put the new one on and pull. And then follow that with three knit stitches. Now you notice that I have no edges. So remember that when you do your project, you can add borders and edges, okay? You don't have to do exactly what I did. That's gonna be followed by one purl stitch. I'm then gonna do my one knit stitch, one purl, and I'm gonna follow that with four knit stitches. So here's one, two, three and four and I'm going to end that set of row that set of stitches with one purl nice and tight and I'm going to repeat it two more times for row four we're going to now do five knit stitches two purls one knit one purl two knit stitches and one purl. So remember that now we're on the other end of the knitting loom. So let's start the row with those five knit stitches. And so I wanna remind you while we're here that this is only the flat version of this stitch pattern for things like blankets and scarves. If you wanna do a hat, then you need to get the uh, written pattern and you can get that at lumahat.store and it will include both. All right, after those five knit stitches, then we're going to do two purl stitches. So here's my first purl and now I do a second purl. And when I'm done with that, I'm gonna follow it with one knit stitch and then I'm going to do one purl stitch. After that, I'm going to do two knit stitches. So here are my two knit stitches. And then follow that with a purl. By the way, the stitch markers, again, are also available at lumahad.store. Okay, so I'm here doing my last purl stitch and then I'm going to repeat mine two more times. You're going to repeat it as many times as necessary. All right, let's keep going. We're now on row five and we're going to go a little faster. So we're going to start with two knit stitches, one purl, one knit, one purl, one knit, one purl, and end the row with five knit stitches. And you guys already know how to do both of these. So let's just fly through them. Here are my two knit stitches at the beginning. And then you're doing something kind of like a rib stitch, right? Cause you do first a purl stitch, then you do one knit stitch. You're gonna follow that again with purl and then knit and then purl and then five knit stitches. By the way, if I wanted to, uh, on the length of this swatch, I could just keep going and I think it would look really great as a scarf. And again, what I did was repeat the 12 stitches three times. All right, so now we're on row six. And for this one also, we're gonna go a bit quickly. And we're gonna start that row with six knit stitches, then a purl, a knit, one purl, one knit, one purl, and one knit. So let's start first with those five knit stitches. And for those of you that are writing the pattern down as I go, uh, you'll see that it stays on the screen until I finish the row. So you don't have to only listen to me, you can also view it on the screen. All right, once you're done with those six knit stitches, then you're going to do one purl and then a knit. You do that again. One purl, one knit, and then a purl and a knit. And that's your 12 stitches for row six with that, um, with that last knit. And then you're going to be ready 
uh, for row six. I'm sorry, for row seven, because now we're on the other side of the loom. For row seven, you're going to do one purl, one knit, one purl, one knit, one purl, and then you're going to end the row with seven knit stitches. If you're using stitch markers, by the way, I want you to notice that when I start the row here on uh, row seven, where I'm starting with one purl, is where my stitch marker is, is at the beginning of this uh, stitch pattern. So I did one knit, one purl, I'm gonna follow that with one knit stitch, and then another purl, and then I'm going to do my seven knit stitches. So again, I started this row with my stitch marker at the beginning, right? You'll notice that when you're coming in the opposite direction, then your stitch marker is where your row will end. So just pay attention and you'll see um, that that's what's happening, right? This is row end of row seven. We're gonna start with row eight. Now on row eight, you're going to start with five knit stitches, then one purl, two knit stitches, one purl, one knit, and you're going to end this row with two purl stitches. And again, what I want you to notice is that when I start on this end with my uh, row, I don't have a stitch marker. When I'm going in this direction, I end with a stitch marker. All right, so I'm doing my five knit stitches. And once I finish with those five knit stitches, then I'm going to do one purl, and I'm gonna follow that purl with two knit stitches, one purl stitch, then one knit stitch, and I'm gonna end with two purl stitches. And you see, um, when I end this row here, that's where my stitch marker is. That's how you use them. And I'll do a video, I've been saying this forever, on how to use your uh, stitch markers properly. All right, let's start row nine. On row nine, we're going to start this row with one purl, then one knit, one purl, three knit stitches, two purls, and end the row with four knit stitches. All right, let's start with that purl. And so here I am on peg one. I'm going to purl. Follow that with one knit stitch. Then do a purl stitch. You're going to then follow that with three knit stitches. That was one, two, three, follow that with two purl stitches. So one, and here's my second purl. And then I'm gonna follow that with four knit stitches. So I want you to uh, keep in mind that this is a multiple of 12. So you need at least 12 pegs in order to do this knit stitch that doesn't count your edges. All right, you're done with that. And now we're on the other side of the uh, knitting loom and we're gonna do row 10, which has three knit stitches, one purl, one knit, one purl, four knit stitches. And then you're gonna end the row with two purl stitches. All right, so here we are with these uh, three knit stitches. Here's my second and then my third. Follow that with one purl stitch, one knit stitch, one purl, and then four knit stitches. two and a three and four and then I'm going to end the row with those two purl stitches 
And again, like I was saying with this stitch marker, you see that when I'm going in this direction, the row ends, instead of starting with a stitch marker, it ends with a stitch marker. All right, that's the end of row 10. Now for row 11, you're going to purl one, knit five, purl two, knit one, purl one, and end the row with two knit stitches. So let's start with that first purl stitch. So the yarn goes under the existing loop, you scoop up, create the new loop, take it off, put the new one on and pull. And then you're gonna follow that with those five knit stitches. So one and two, three, four, and five. Then you're gonna do two knit stitches. So put your yarn under and scoop it up. And remember that if you wanna do a true, the true knit stitch is exactly the opposite of the purl. So instead of putting the yarn under, you put it over. All right, so one knit stitch, one purl stitch, and then you're gonna end with two knit stitches. And the reason some people prefer the true is only because it's a little looser than this U wrap, which is my favorite, by the way. All right, now let's move on to row 12. And for this row, you're gonna knit one, purl one, knit one, purl one, knit one, purl one. And you're gonna end that row with six knit stitches. So let's start with that first knit. And remember, we're going flat, so we're in the opposite direction. So that's my knit, and then a purl. And another name for this knit, purl, knit, purl, knit, purl is a simple rib stitch, because you're doing one and one, right? One knit, one purl, one knit, one purl, one knit, one purl. So once you're done with those, that section of rib stitch, then you're gonna go ahead and do your six knits in a row. And if you notice in this direction, I like to use the U, but when I'm coming in the opposite direction, I like doing the flat version of the knit stitch. It's just a comfort thing for me. Um, you know, I find them a bit interchangeable. All right, let's do row 13. And for this row, you're gonna knit seven, purl one, knit one, purl one, knit one, and end the row with a purl stitch. So let's start on that long row of seven stitches. Fun, 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 fun. I actually like when I have a lot of just the same stitch because I don't have to think as much. You know, you're just counting. All right, so you see here, I tend to sometimes not curve my yarn in sometimes. That is the flat. The more you curve your yarn, the looser the stitch is going to be. So if you find that your um, knits are too tight, just curve them a little more. All right, that was my purl. Here's my knit. Another purl. Another knit. And ending with a purl stitch. And guess what? The next row, which is row 14, is the last row. Yay! Knit one, purl one, knit one, purl one, knit seven. And the row with one purl stitch. Yahoo! All right, let's get to that last stitch. I'm sorry, that last row. All right, so knit one, purl one. Knit one, purl one. That was your section of rib stitch. And then knit seven in a row. So half wrap, knit off, half wrap, knit off, half wrap, knit off. It's almost like a song. <laughs> half wrap, knit off, half wrap, knit off. Knit. All right, keep going because you're going to keep doing knit stitches until you get to that last stitch. And at that last stitch, which for me is this little kitty uh, paw print, 
I do a purl stitch and that's it y'all that is the diagonal moss stripe stitch pattern which is highly textured I love the stripes and the breakups of the little moss stitch also sometimes called the seed stitch uh, it's just awesome I just love it I love it on both sides personally all right don't forget to share the video because it helps me a lot and when you visit the store sign up for the newsletter don't forget to like subscribe all that great stuff thank you and come back and luminate with me again